Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yaniv. I'm here to talk to you about game publishing. Um, what's going on with game publishing, why is it broken, and how I think we can all fix it together. So just a bit about uh, the company I work for, the company I founded. Uh, it's called Sumla. It's an open source company. Uh, probably some of you haven't heard about it yet. Uh, we're still in the process of growing that company. Um, Sumla is about helping mobile game developers do more together. We have uh, developed an open source framework with the community together. Um, and the goal of that framework is to basically all the free to play elements of the game um, give away as building blocks for the next game. So instead of every developer uh, developing that on their own, we can all join forces and develop that together and develop it once instead of many, many times. Uh, we have about 10,000 game developers in our community and it's growing very rapidly and it's uh, very exciting. So a bit about myself. Um, my background is monetization, uh, the business side of uh, different software and uh, videos and uh, blogs. Uh, this is the third company I, I started. Uh, the first one was about uh, monetizing videos. The second one was about monetizing uh, blogs. And Sumla is about monetizing games. And one thing I learned uh, in all these companies about monetization is that if you want to focus, if you want to monetize well, you, you need to focus on engagement and retention first. Um, so back to uh, the talk. Before we start understanding um, why game publishing is not working uh, very well today, we need to kind of understand where it's coming from. So game publishing started in a world where uh, we had to pu put games on CDs, put them in boxes, and market them in the physical world on shelves of retailers. And in those days, um, there were a lot of complexities about um, making uh, the games and in about uh, printing the, the covers for the boxes and shipping them. And there was a lot of things that a game developer couldn't do on their own. And then uh, publishing was a, a huge business to just make that happen. They had uh, the means to, to uh, do all that operation. Uh, they had the uh, channels with the retailers and they could actually get your game to uh, the stores. And whenever a game gets to a retailer store, basically anything you put on the shelf of a retailer would sell. So just being able to put something on a retailer store had a huge value for game developers because if you just developed a game and nobody was there to put it on the, on the store, then you, you would have no chance of succeeding. Um, today, um, the world is very different. Uh, digital publishing kind of is, is a very different beast than uh, traditional publishing. And when we're saying um, publishing, game publishing is a bit broken, um, if, you, if some of you have uh, dealt with uh, publishers, um, you, you already realize that the value they bring in distributing the game and um, uh, putting that in front of audiences is diminishing. And we hear a lot of complaints from game developer that um, they're not happy with the way uh, publishers are, uh, um, with, with what publishers can offer them. And this is um, why we, um, we say game publishing is, is a bit broken today. Um, so when, when we look at digital publishing, we need to first think about what is today's store, right? So today's store is, is obviously um, the app stores. Uh, those are the shelves of, of today. But when we um, look at game publishers' success in actually putting games in the store and getting them, so today, obviously, anyone can put a game in the store. Um, but ga some game publishers would claim that um, they can get your game featured or, or they can help you get into the top charts. But in reality, what's happening is that if we look at the top 10 uh, free downloaded games, uh, not a lot of them actually come from uh, very established publishers. There are many, many games. Sometimes it's 60%, sometimes it's 80%. But 
a lot of games in the top charts are actually coming from indie studios, from self-published game developers, and if you look at companies like EA that has 1,000 titles, not many of them actually uh, made it to the, to the top charts. So the value of publishers in digital publishing is not so much about getting you to the audiences. Um, there is another value that publishers are offering today, and when we try to think what is the value that they bring, we know how to deal with publishers um, in a better way because we know what to expect out of them. Um, so publishing in a world where games are free and the monetization is in free, free to play uh, is very different. So the tools that what publishers really offer game developers today um, is first of all development tools uh, that already has the know-how of how to make uh, uh, better games, how to make games more addictive, how to make them more successful. They already built templates. Um, Zynga is known for actually writing a book and giving that to developers to how to develop uh, more successful games. Uh, but most publishers, when they interact with the game developers, if they come in uh, early in the development process, they would give advice about how to make uh, more successful games. And then obviously publishers have a lot of know-how about how to measure and optimize games, and a lot of game developers don't have that uh, know-how when they start. Um, they have seen a lot of data. They have a lot of insights already about how to, um, how to compare this game against others and whether or not this game is ready to push the throttle and, and start marketing it, or should we still optimize um, and, and invest more in, in um, uh, making the game better before we invest in marketing. So publisher already has a lot of experience with launching a lot of games, and they have seen a uh, critical mass of games where they can actually come and give you those insights. Um, the, other, the third thing is publishers that uh, published uh, already 100 or 200 games, he already has uh, a lot of knowledge about uh, the user audiences, what audiences respond to what games, and in what countries, so different things like that. That's another piece of, of uh, value that uh, they bring to the table. So that, that's uh, together, that, that's a pretty decent chunk of value. Uh, but what's happening uh, today is um, that the reason why they can bring that value is not because they have means to do something that game developers cannot. It's just a thing of volume, right? The more games you've published, the more know-how you get, the more users you have seen, the more insights you get about user audiences and user demographics, and the more uh, you, you have engineers, the more you can develop uh, development tools that help you build the next games more quickly. So all the value that publishers bring today are just uh, derived from them being bigger. And in fact, game pub some game publishers really are bigger, both in terms of how many people they have, definitely in terms of how many um, end users they see, how many games they've launched. But they're bigger when I'm comparing them to a self-published or indie game studio. Um, they're actually not that big when I'm comparing them to, uh, if I'm taking all the indie game developers together and um, thinking about how much data we have as a community of game developers, how much games have we all published together, that's actually more games than the big game publishers. That's more data, that's more know-how, and that's more engineers. If you think about 10,000 um, indie studios, self-published uh, game studios, if you take all their engineering force together, you can build greater stuff, better tools, than what uh, uh, big game publishers have. And then if you look at all the users that we see as a community together, um, that's definitely more than what the biggest game publisher has. So that's, that's kind of a comparison that is nice to, uh, to draw, but how do we actually turn that into something we can do something with? So what's, what's happening in the world outside of the gaming today and it's starting to happen in the gaming, but not as much as we would like to see, is something called shared economy. 
So shared economy is, is definitely a global trend by now. Uh, you've seen some companies associated with uh, that term. Um, Airbnb is one of them, Kickstarter is another. So the idea with shared economy is basically we pull together resources and instead of relying on big corporates to um, connect us together, we connect peer to peer uh, and we um, join forces in a community, in a crowd uh, based way. Uh, Airbnb did that with obviously uh, the lodging business uh, accommodation. They realized that there are more rooms in the shared uh, people's apartments than there are in, uh, in hotels. And then um, they basically allowed people to trade rooms uh, between them uh, in a very effective way. And obviously the internet and uh, being connected makes everything possible today that wasn't possible before. Um, sorry. Uh, Kickstarter is another company that realized, okay, uh, we n don't necessarily need to rely on big company to give us funding on, on uh, venture capital firms or or big investors, we can actually fund our games from uh, the users and actually connect people peer to peer instead of uh, relying on, on a big centralized corporation. And obviously open source is, uh, is another uh, big example of that, um, of how people can join forces to create great things together. So with um, game development, um, this hasn't happened yet, but it's time that this should really start happening more and more in game development, um, and we believe it's the right time. So if, if we look at traditionally the why, why haven't it happened yet in game development, uh, traditionally game development was a very centralized type industry. Uh, there were very few companies that controlled a big chunk of the, of the industry and it was very hard to, to succeed um, in it. The, the entire industry was very cutthroat, very protective about IP and data and, uh, and the source code. But this is all changing now. And part of the change is the mobile platforms kind of de democratizing um, game development and, and game distribution. Um, obviously, uh, there are game engines that make it very easy for uh, a lot of people to develop games. So there are much more, today there are more game developers than ever uh, in the history of, of gaming. And um, that, that's a big thing that can change the, the entire industry uh, upside down. And then the other thing is that people changed. People are much more open to sharing stuff because of those global trends, because they realize that their power when they uh, join and unite is much bigger. So. Um, so I believe it's time for game developers to start joining forces more, to build m better technologies together, um, and to sh start sharing game data and insights uh, in an automatic way. Um, and it's time to create something to that, that I call shared publishing. Basically, it's the idea of shared economy applied to publishing. and. That could be a much smarter way for small game developers to go out there into the market by joining forces and not by relying on, on bigger companies uh, to help them with that. So in terms of uh, the open source and building better tools together, there are already tools like game engines that exist out there and they're doing a great job. Some of them are open source like cocos 2 dx Some of them are not but have a very big community aspect like Unity. Um, but then these are all game development tools and we need to build more tools around game publishing about free to play and two of those tools that we can really uh, build together is uh, virtual economy management, um, in-app purchasing mechanisms, all the technology around that and the other piece is what I call blueprint is basically all the mechanisms that control the game progression, levels, worlds, missions, quests, records, all the things around that are both are things that you see in all games and every game developer developed that on their own but instead if we join forces we can build a much better platform for everyone to, uh, to, wor to work with and 
once we did that, what we have accomplished is we have accomplished a world where all games are basically built with the same building blocks. And what that creates is a standard. And a standard uh, makes a lot of things possible where they couldn't before. It's basically, if you think about games today, um, they all have the concept of levels. And when I'm talking to another game developer uh, in person, I can ask him, um, how long do users play um, in your level? Like, and he will say like 10 seconds, and then in my game it could be two minutes, and then I know maybe something is wrong with my game, or maybe something is wrong with his game. But when I'm trying to compare that programmatically, um, each game developer has levels, but we all call, each call levels in different ways in our games, and so it's almost impossible to compare and benchmark games and get insights. But if we all develop the same technology together, then we can actually um, benchmark uh, much more effectively. We can know what to improve in our games because we can benchmark them. And we can figure out um, things like how many users connected in other games to Facebook and whether my game is um, can improve in that or maybe I need to uh, may maybe I need to invest more in that, or maybe it's already uh, at the max and I need to move into investing in something else. So these are all uh, implications of being able to benchmark, which is um, uh, derived by having a standard and then being able to share data uh, in, a, in a more peer-to-peer -peer way uh, without relying on, on centralized uh, point of, of sharing like a publisher. Um, so. With that, uh, I'm going to leave you with, uh, with this thought. Um, is it time uh, that shared economy concept will be applied to share publishing? And can um, 100,000 or 500,000 game developers build something together so that we can all use and um, be actually build better tools and better uh, insight tools uh, for our community? Thank you. And